we just sent a configured the SR across all the nodes in this particular topology. Now, if everything is good, we can go ahead and verify some of the things here pretty quick. So now we are on our RC1 in this case. So we can just say simply show MPLS label table and detail. Let's take a look at this particular command and see what this command shows some of the information here. So if you take a look at uh, some of the stuff here and especially pay attention to this particular line, it says, okay, hey, you know, you have an SRGB block that starts with 16,000 and the size is 1001. So you have that many number of things available in that particular SR block that we just simply went ahead and configured in this case. Now we can go ahead and take a look at our MPLS forwarding table. So we'll do say show MPLS forwarding on CE1. So we are right now on CE1 and if you guys remember CE1 we gave an index of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So now I'll just simply go ahead and press enter here and you would see there are a couple things that we can see here. It says okay here there is a local label, there is an outgoing label. If you pay attention we have the same local label as well as a outgoing label. As I said in the SR, we don't have a concept of a local label versus a remote label. We have the same label. Now that's what you see is okay, hey, C1 is seeing all these different labels. So it, it sees a label of 16,002. And if you recall, 16,002 is our PE1. That is why there's no outgoing label. What is doing is just popping the label and it knows how to reach. To reach this particular 16,002, it needs to send the traffic to this interface to this particular next hop. Similarly, 16,003 is our PE2. That's what you get to see. Pop, there is no label that is needed to reach this one. And again, the prefix index, as you can see, that's what you see, PEFX. That index, okay, these are SR prefix and the index ID is 3 in this case. To reach, it needs to send the traffic to this interface and that is the next part. Now, similarly, if you recall, 16,004 is our P1 router. Now, it says, okay, hey, to reach the 16,004, my local label is 16,004 as well as the outgoing label is 16,004 and the prefix index is 4. To reach to this, I would need to use, I can use this interface which is gig 0, 0. That means the top interface which is going to P1 and the, and the traffic to this is the next hop. Or to reach the prefix index 4, I can use the gig 0, 0 interface at this particular link and then I need to send the traffic to this as my next hop. And that's how you would get to see all of these. So all of these 16,000 that you see, these are all our prefix set. That's why you can see here it says PFX. But now if you recall, we are sitting on router R1, or sorry, CE1 in this case. It has some of these SR urgency sets and you can see there is a hey, index ID 1, index ID 3. So if you take a look at, now in this case it says, okay, hey, 24,000, there is 24,001, there is 24,002, there is 24,003. So it went ahead and assigned these prefix SIDs to this particular local links basically to 1, to 3, to 1, to 3. So now we have 2 for gig 0 and there are 2 uh, primarily for your gig 1 going over that particular interface. And that's how we can go ahead and verify the our MPLS forwarding table. We can also take a look at uh, some of the other uh, things into a little bit in more detail. So now just simply say okay here show ISIS database database verbose and now with that we can go ahead and give it a name of uh, one of our router or something but just simply let's say you know press enter here. So in the verbose we get to see uh, some of the things here and as you can say hey this is the C1 router and with the C1 router it's, there is a segment routing and if you guys recall we had these different stuff I and V where I standard for okay hey, for the IPv4 V stands for your V6 in this case we are not using V6 and it shows okay hey, this is our sRGB block that's where it starts from and the total number of uh, labels uh, or the range that we can go up to some of the other thing. And that's what you can get to see in some more detail if you continue to scroll further in that. Now let's take a look at interestingly, let's say if we need to reach from C1 to our P1 router. So the P1 router, uh, let's take a look at the, what is the loopback of this, uh, this particular router. So let me go to this router, uh, show IP interface brief. 
and the loopback is 1960.0.1. Okay, now come back to the C router. Let's take a look at our set path to reach this router 192.168.0.1. So now, if you see from C1 perspective, it says, okay, hey, again, I have two paths. As we know, one is via gig 0, one is via gig 1. But now, if you pay an attention, there is an interesting information, and especially this line. Where it says, okay, hey, my local label is 16,004 and the local that I'm label I'm, that I'm imposing, that means when I'm sending the traffic, this is the label that I'll be putting as a, into my stack where the label being imposed is 16,004 when I'm sending the traffic. And that's how it really indicates, okay, hey, now we have a segment routing turned on and the labels are being in play right now. And again, if you recall, we had done a trace route in our last episode where we didn't know, okay, what is the path the system is taking, but now let's doing a trace route here. So we do a trace route and I'm using a keyword SRMPLS. So I want to do an SRMPLS related trace route. And let's say in this case, we want to reach C2 and the C2 had a loopback of a 192.168.0. And let's say we want to send the traffic from this router. We are 192.168.0.3. And if you press an enter, it says, okay, hey, now these are the different hop the system is going through. And you can see now it shows the label also that is being imposed. So that means if we are sending any traffic to 0 0.4, the label in the play is 16,010. And you can see that using the same show Seth command. If I do 192.168.0.4, you would see the label imposed also here is 16,004 in this case. And again, we can just do a simple trace route also 192.168.0.4. And you would get to see uh, somewhat kind of a similar details. Okay, hey, now, so even though if you see it is crossing multiple hops, but it really says, okay, the label being utilized is 16,010 only, because as we had looked up in show MPLS forwarding, this we have the same local label as well as we have the same remote label. So we can use any of these uh, labels uh, to take a look at some of the things that we can do right now. Again, you know, that's how we can just simply go ahead and turn on the segment routing. So now across all of this topology, we do have a segment routing turned on and all of these nodes are configured and they are participating and these nodes are currently utilizing the sr to reach each other and as well as we saw the example for prefix sid the adjacency sid and some of the other details here again we can go ahead and take a look at a few more things here so if you do show is is and right now if you just do the neighbors it says okay hey the c1 is a neighbor with p1 and p2 now if we do show is is adjacency detail adjacency detail we would get to see some more information here. It says, okay, hey, the P1, now the adjacency set for that one is 24,000 and non FRR. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the, what is FRR is 24,001. Similarly, for P2, the adjacency set is 24,002 and the non FRR adjacency set is 24,003. So that's how we can go ahead and see. In this case, these are only IPv4 adjacency set labels. We don't have an IPv6. That's why we are not seeing anything which is related to the IPv6 here. Again, with the uh, this this output is very helpful. We can go ahead and see what are some of the things. Again, we can go ahead and do show ISIS database for boss, and we would get to see similar details in a little bit in more detail where we get to see our sr block and some of the other information also uh, we can go ahead and take a look at uh, the show isis database or boss you know uh, you can go ahead and take a look at this particular command we saw the output for show mpls forwarding we saw the outgoing interface when what is the different hop the what is the next hop the system can take and it would also show the amount of traffic you saw that we just did like some ping and some trace route that's why you see now the bytes being switched and the path that was taken by the system was the bottom path that's why because we see the outgoing interface is being triple zero one that's how we can see uh, what is the path being taken number of bytes that are being sent on all those links uh, that is kind of pretty 
helpful. And again, uh, there are a few more show commands that you can run. And again, for that, you can go to segment-routing.net, download those PDF. It has a little bit, a few more show commands that you can go ahead and certainly run and execute and uh, take a look at uh, some more details. There are a few more show commands that you can go ahead and do that. If you do show MPLS, and with the MPLS, we have, let's say, this label command, show MPLS label table and we saw some of that information we can just simply say okay we can do simply a summary here to take a look at and that's what it shows we do have something like show mpl forwarding with the forwarding we have few things and one of the command that i kind of really like is the labels command so let's say show mpls labels and followed by give it a label let's say the label in this case is 16010 means the ce2 label and after that we can go ahead and again give some information so let's go ahead and put a detail here so now what it really says, okay, hey, we are looking the forwarding table for this particular label. So if we need to forward a traffic to this label, what are the options that we have? In this case, it says, okay, hey, for this one, there is a local label. This is the outgoing label. And this is one of the path that it can take, gig zero, where the next hop is primarily this one. And it talks about, okay, hey, the label stack. So in this particular label stack, there's only one label, which is 16,010. And this is the end cap ID, path index. Right now, if there is a backup path index, and you would see the backup path index has an index ID of 0 in this case right now, and the outgoing interface, and that is the IEF handle for that outgoing interface. Right now, there is no packet has been switched. Now, we do have another path where if you take a look at the label stack again, there is one label only 16,010 in that one. The path index has uh, the, the ID for this particular path is path index 1. And if you see for this, there is a backup path and the backup path has a backup path index of 0. That means, and this was our path 0. That means if this path happens to fail for any reason, we do have a backup path already into our MPLS forwarding table with an ID of a 0, which happens to be our top path. So that means if this interface gig 001 happens to fail, the system will automatically start using the top path. And it clearly says, okay, a number of packets switched on this particular one right now is 15. So this is a pretty important command, you know, a pretty useful command. You can go ahead and take a look at. Again, there are a lot more commands with the show MPLS or forwarding that I would encourage you to explore some of these things in more details and take a look at. So that'll be all for this episode. And, you know, we just really went ahead and turned on the segment routing into this particular domain. So now we have an end-to-end -end reachability with the help of SRs. Now we have the SR labels in play. We have the MPLS interfaces into the so if I do one more command show MPLS interface it says okay hey yes now there is an MPLS enabled on these two interfaces but there is no LDP there is no tunnel there is no static but yes we do have an MPLS running right now so yeah you can go ahead and again go to segment-routing.net thanks to those guys for putting such a great material you know I would highly encourage to every one of you to go ahead and download those and read them in more detail and do pay attention to these hands-on. That'll be all for this episode. Uh, in the next episode, we will go ahead and go back into some of the theoretical concept. And once we're done with that, again, we'll jump into the hands-on to really start working with the segment routing. And we'll start taking the advantage of segment routing, which is really the traffic engineering part. So, so far, what we have done is just simply went ahead and turned on the SR as the capability. Now we will go ahead and harvest that SR capability in the form of segment routing traffic engineering. So that'll be all for this episode. I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.